God bless guys, Inspiring Grace here with my third video, part of my weekly biblical teachings video series that I had just put out onto this channel not too long ago. Now before I get started on this video, before I jump into the topic that I chose to talk about today, I just want to offer my quick apology about not putting up a video last Wednesday or the Wednesday, or sorry, for not putting up a video last Sunday or the Sunday before then. The reason as to why I wasn't able to upload on neither on either of those Sundays was because of schoolwork and other complications that got in the way or interfered with my schedule for making a video. But here I am, nonetheless, putting out a video, though it is late, but I'm nonetheless putting out this video because I gave my word that I would try my best to be as consistent as possible with this video series, trying to put out one video about a certain topic in the Bible every Sunday morning and I and as I said I'll stick to my word as best I can now the topic that I chose to discuss in this video is the power of prayer and I'd like to open up this this, this topic with the verse that is found in James chapter 5 verse 6 that reads the prayer of a righteous person has great power James 5 6 says the the prayer of a righteous person has great power. Now, before I jump into an in-depth discussion of this topic, I would just like for you guys to meditate on the following three questions concerning prayer. And the first one I want you to meditate on is why we should pray. Meditate on why we should pray. The second one is how one should pray. Meditate on how we should pray to God. And the third one is, what does prayer accomplish? What what results does prayer bring about? These are the three questions that I will be diverging. These are the three questions that I'll be dissecting in order to put out the message that God put in my heart today. So that I can give it to you guys. So that it can bless your life. So that it can enrich your spiritual life. So that it can pull you closer to God. Now the first question I, I will attempt to answer is, why one should pray? Why should Christians pray to God? And the first and most obvious answer to that question is because prayer connects us to God. Because prayer connects us to God. And that is easy. That is simple enough. Prayer connects us to God. It's a channel in which we communicate with Jesus, when we, when, in which we communicate with the Father, and we are, and it is made known to us what God wants for our lives, what God wants for our ministry, what God wants us to do on a daily basis. And that is one reason as to why we pray. Now another reason as to why we should pray is because prayer provides one with spiritual strength. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of the darkness of this world. Now keep in mind that this Bible verse just stated that we do not have a battle against flesh or blood, but against spiritual beings against spiritual wicked being as such we need to fight spiritually and how do we fight spiritually we fight by praying we fight by fasting we fight by reading the word of God that is how we empower our spirit to take on a, a battle against Satan to take on a battle against Satan's demons and Satan's minions is through prayer Prayer is absolutely essential in the life of any Christian, in the life of anyone seeking to follow the Lord. Prayer, to put it simple, helps us fight the spiritual battle to which we are called to do. Now, the third reason why we should pray is because prayer, on top of, on top of giving us spiritual strength, also gives us another type of strength. And the other type of strength I'm talking about is the strength to resist what temptation let us not forget that satan came to god in ch in, the, in the fourth chapter of matthew where god had just finished fasting for 40 days in the desert and satan came to jesus to tempt him because satan always not always satan knows when to attack satan knows when we are most vulnerable and jesus hadn't had having finished 40 days of fasting was physically weak but since Jesus always prayed since Jesus was always on the lookout since Jesus was always on guard Satan's temptation did not manage to overpower 
Jesus. Satan's temptation did not manage to overcome Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was praying. And what did prayer do? It gave him the strength to resist the temptation that the devil laid out for him. When he came to the desert to tempt him. And the devil told God to bow down to him. And he will give him the kingdoms of this world. And what did Jesus say? He quickly replied with scripture. He says, the, but scripture also says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. That's why it is important that we maintain ourselves in prayer. So I hope you guys got that. I hope you guys got that and that that was clear. Now moving on to the second question that I outlined in the beginning of this video, which is how we should pray. How we should pray. Well, the Bible is actually very specific as to how we should pray. And it gives us a model as to how us Christians should pray to God. And that model of prayer is found in Matthew 6, verses 6 to 7. If you have if you guys have a Bible with you, you can turn to you can turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, verses 6 to 7. And here's what it says. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Now here's what I wanted to get at. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as, is, as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Now, I think this is a very, script, a very, very important scripture that sheds some light on how one should pray. Now, what Jesus was getting at in, this, in these verses is that Gentiles repeatedly go over worn-out lines thinking that somehow by repeating these ritualistic habitual lines will connect them to God. Father God, may your kingdom come, your will be done. Such repetitive phrases are not a way for Christians to connect with God. It is not an adequate form to what? To channel to communicate with God. Why? Because that is a superficial communication. When you, It's as if you go up to your friend and every day you say the same thing to him. Hey, what's up, Bob? And he replies, well, everything's good. That's just a superficial relationship. That's a superficial back and forth. And God does not want a superficial relationship with his creation, us. He wants a genuine, authentic relationship. That's why Jesus said, do the Gentile things, they will be heard because of their many words, but they won't be heard. Prayer is not so much about quantity as it is about quality. It doesn't matter if you pray one hour, but in that hour, you just repeated several phrases that really didn't mean anything to you, where you just repeated several prayers and really didn't put much thought behind it. In contrast, if you prayed for only five minutes, but you poured your how you poured your heart into it, you put your mind, your soul, and your strength into that one single prayer of five minutes. That's the prayer God will receive. That's the prayer Jesus will answer to, because that's the prayer God wants. Let us not forget the main purpose of prayer is to what? To communicate with God. And you wouldn't want to communicate. You wouldn't want to communicate with a friend through superficial means. This is why Jesus said. The Gentiles think they will be heard because of their many words. But in reality, their many words are empty. All right. Now, how is an, what, how, what's another way that we can pray to God? Well, like I, just, um, like I just got at just not too long ago, another way to pray to God, it's really straightforward and not all that complicated, is from the heart and to pray honestly. It is not to pray because... Afterwards, my conscience will will feel guilty because I didn't pray. We should not pray because we, we, we think we should pray every day. We should pray out of the love for God. We should pray out of adoration for Jesus. Not, because, not to meet a certain quota. Not to meet a certain... Not to quench a certain guilt in your head. No, out of love for God. Now, how is another way that we should pray? Well, we should pray with fervor and consistency. We should pray with passion and consistency. We should not we should not put under the rug, we should not put to a corner those prayers that we most hold precious to our hearts 
let's say for example you are asking for a wife it's just a random example let's say you're asking for a wife do not just pray one week about it and if you see don't and if you don't see any answer don't cease to pray keep praying week after week month after month year after year pray with passion and pray with consistency because those are the prayers that reach God's thrones those are the prayer that shake hell those are the prayers that Satan most fear why because those prayers are founded in faith while you may not be see while you may not currently see the answer to your prayers the fact that you're still praying, the fact that you're still asking God for it, demonstrates that you still have faith for that particular thing that you're praying for. Now, I want to move on to the third question, and that is, what does prayer accomplish? What does prayer accomplish? Now, this world will have you believe that prayer is useless, that prayer is futile, that there really is no reason as to why any human being should kneel down and pray to God because it doesn't yield any results, it doesn't bring about any progress, it doesn't change anything at all. And let me just say that is a satanic lie, that is a deception. As we just read, the Bible says the, the prayer of a righteous person has great, what, has great power. In fact, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says to pray without ceasing, to pray without stopping, to praise without what? Pausing. Now the Bible says this. And when the Bible says to not, to, to not stop pausing, it's not referring to that you should spend all day kneeling down praying to God. Because there's more, there's more, there's one, there's more than one form of prayer. You don't have to be kneeled down to be praying. You can pray in your head. You can pray as you work. You can pray as you're in school. But I'm not going to get into that. And what else does the Bible says? Well, the Bible says says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, if you guys want to turn there with me. I'm sorry that I don't have all these verses organized and laid out in this video. Um, it's really because I really haven't had much time to organize my thoughts and ideas and into a cohesive train of thought so I hope you guys bear with me anyways um Luke chapter 18 verse 1 sorry guys if this takes a little long Luke 18 verse 1 says and he told them a parable to the fact that they are always to pray and not lose heart now this is a parable that Jesus was giving now and that basically and the main point of this parable is at it is as this second line of the verse says ought to always pray and not lose heart we ought to always pray and not lose heart another portion of the Bible says watch ye and pray for the adversary the devil is like a roaring lion around us seeking for whom he can devour why because the devil knows that prayer is powerful why? Because the devil knows that prayer brings about progress. Not as the world will have you believe that it doesn't bring progress. Prayer does bring progress. Prayer does accomplish things. And what, how, what are some examples in scripture about how exactly prayer has brought accomplishments? Well, there are many accomplishments that were possible only because of prayer. And I'm going to enumerate only a few of them in this video. And the first one is a very known story. Well, Daniel, he was thrown into a, uh, a layer of lions because he transgressed a law. But I don't want to get too much into it. At the end of the day, the lions did not manage to devour Daniel. Because why? Because Daniel always prayed. Because Daniel had a solid communication with 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 heaven. And because of that, God sealed the lion's mouth. And thus the lions were not able to devour Daniel when he was thrown into the den. Now what's another example of what prayer accomplishes? Well, prayer accomplished one very important thing in the history of the early church. And that was the liberation of Paul and Peter from jail. Now I don't want to get too much into the background or even into the reason as to why Paul and Peter 
as to why Paul and Peter landed into jail, but to simplify it, and so you guys won't be at a loss here, so you guys can understand me a little, just a little bit. Peter and Paul were basically thrown into jail because they were preaching the gospel. I don't want to, it's as simple as that, they were preaching the gospel. And once they were jailed, um, they were um, scheduled to be executed sometime in the future. But a miracle happened. And why did that miracle happen? Because the church was praying fervently and consistently to whom? To God for the liberation of who? Of Peter and Paul. Of Peter and Paul. And perhaps you guys have heard of this story before. And basically what happened, what ends up happening is, is that the shackles, the chains that had Peter and Paul chained down broke. And they were able to what? To escape. Because why? Because of the prayer of the church. Do not think for a second. Do not think for a minute that your prayer is worthless. That God is not listening to your prayer. Because that is a lie. God is always attentive. God is always paying attention to our prayers. Because he is a loving and caring God. What's another thing that prayer accomplishes? Prayer also accomplishes one very important thing that every Christian should have, and that is testimonies. And really, without testimonies, the Christian life wouldn't be possible because we would have nothing that can testify about God's power in our life. We would have nothing that can testify about God's glory, about God's working in our lives, and about God's working in the lives of the people around us. Testimonies. That is very important. Testimony. Prayer brings about what? Testimonies. And I would like to leave it as is this video. I don't want to make it too lengthy. We're, reach, we're reaching around the 20 minute mark. So I just want to leave this video and cut it off here. And I would just like to recap real quickly. Three reasons as to why the three questions that I examined and delved into in order to explain the power of prayer. And those three questions were, to reiterate, to reiterate once more, why we should pray, how we should pray, and what does prayer accomplish in our lives. These are the three questions that I examined in order to give a proper answer, in order to convey the power of prayer, in order to demonstrate why prayer is very important in the love of every Christian. And that's it for this third video of my weekly biblical teaching video series before I wrap up I would just like to say for you guys to keep me in prayer I have been under attack by the devil I have been I have been getting I have been I've been suffering out of persecution lately and I feel as though this persecution will not will not give up anytime soon so I ask that you hold me in prayer I ask that you support the channel as is is still up and running and growing. And I, and if you have any advice as to how I can improve these videos, as to how I can facilitate your learning of scripture, please feel free to include these thoughts, suggestions, and devices in the comment section below. I would more than happily engage in constructive criticism. I am not against it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this third part of my weekly biblical teachings video. Part 4 will be up next Sunday morning, unless there are some kind of complications. And as always, I would like to thank all of you guys for watching and for your continued support. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in for more videos in the future. And as always, I would like to thank all of you guys for watching. You guys are awesome, and God bless.